I just read some of the comments and uh, answers that you put on the AVG scenario that I posted on Instagram. And for some of you, it looked like you're thinking, oh my God, I hate ABGs. Um, but for others, you actually were, were right and you were on point. So I'm going to post the answer to the ABG scenario in a minute. But I wanted to go over ABG so we're clear on interpreting um, arterial blood gases, what we need to know, how to figure out if it's acidosis, alkalosis, if it's respiratory, metabolic, is it compensated partially or fully? Because um, that's pretty much the gist of it. So it's not that bad. It's just a matter of um, kind of refreshing ourselves on it. Now, the only thing with ABGs is that it's a matter of memorization to some extent. And by that, I mean the components that we have to have in an ABG in order to tell if it is uh, respiratory or if it's metabolic or, uh, you know, compensated or not. So let's look at these things here. So here, our first thing is pH, right? We know that our normal range of pH is 7.35 to 7.45. Our PaCO2 or CO2, our normal range for that is 35 to 45. And our bicarb, or HCO3, our normal range for that is 22 to 26. Now, our pH is going to tell us if we are in acidosis or alkalosis in relation to one of these things being off. And so how do we know that? So if we have a pH that's under 7.35, right, that means we're looking at acid. It's becoming more acidic. If we have it over 7.45, then we know we are just the opposite. We're becoming more alkaline or alkalosis. Now, our PaCO2 or CO2, we can call it that, this is gonna represent respiratory function, okay? Now, when you think about CO2, think about acid. You know, I'll tell you why in a minute. This is how I remember it and it's become very easy. If you think about this as an acid, then you're gonna know that if it's too high or too low, what the differences are happening. So what I mean by that is this, if we have a number under 35 for our CO2, and we know that CO2 is an acidic property, right? Then if it's less acidic, then it's becoming alkaline, right? So under 35, think about alkalosis. Over 45, meaning it's climbing, it's getting higher, then we are becoming more acidotic, okay? Now our bicarb or HCO3, this represents metabolic function. Now, it's opposite of CO2 in the sense of when you think of CO2, you're thinking about an acidotic property. When you're thinking about your bicarb, think about an alkalotic property. So if it is less, right, under 22, then it's becoming acidic. It's going in the opposite direction. But if it's getting higher, right, if this buffer, which it is a buffer, this alkaline buffer is becoming greater, well, then it's becoming more alkaline. So this is what we have to remember for that. So let's look at an easy uh, ABG scenario. Let me just change the color so we can get a little break in vision here. Okay, so I'm gonna give you the three values that we need. We need our pH, our CO2, or PaCO2, and our bicarb. So let's say that I give you a pH of 7.23 and I give you a CO2 of 45 and I give you a bicarb of 18. So what are we working with here? So our pH, it is below 7.35, right? This is a problem. So that means acid. CO2, our normal range is 35 to 45. We are at 45, so we're in the normal range. We're fine. Our bicarb is 18. We know that our range for bicarb is 22 to 26. So I'm out of the range and I'm too low. We know that too low, meaning under 22 in bicarb represents an acidotic state. And we know that this here is our problem, right? Because our CO2 is fine. So this is what's causing the acidosis in this ABG interpretation that I gave you. So this becomes now metabolic, right? Because our bicarb represents metabolic and it's acidosis. Okay, we're good with that. Let's do another one, same thing. So I'm gonna write it over here. So pH, 
our CO2 and our bicarb. And let's get some numbers. So let's say 7.49. Let's say a CO2 of 44. And let's say a bicarb of 34. So let's do what we just did. So we know pH is 7.49. Well, that's too high. And the higher our pH goes, the more alkaline it becomes. So we know we're looking at an alkaline or an alkalotic state. Next, we'll look at our CO2. Our range again is 35 to 45. I'm at 44, so I'm okay. And then my bicarb is 34. Well, I know that my range for a bicarb is 22 to 26, right? So I'm well out of my range, I'm too high. And the higher my bicarb gets, the more alkaline it becomes. So we know that our issue is alkalosis and the bugger that's causing it is bicarb because our CO2 is fine. So if bicarb's causing it, it's a metabolic issue, right? So metabolic and by our pH, we can tell it's alkalosis. Let's make my L a little bit uh, better. So this gives you a, a pretty clear example of what some, some easy scenarios are as far as our pH goes with determining what the causative factor is. Now, I'm just gonna erase this to kind of quickly show you if it was a respiratory issue, just so we can say we practice one of those. So let's erase these. Let's get ourselves a scenario that's gonna give us a respiratory issue. So pH, CO2, and bicarb. Okay, so let me get another color here. Let's say we are 7.5, and let's say our CO2 is uh, 29, and let's make our bicarb 24. Okay, so the same way that we did the one before, let's look at this. Now our pH, let me just change my color again so we can see. So our pH is 7.5, we know that's too high, that's over the range, right? And too high means alkaline. Our CO2 is 29. Right? Our, we know our range is 35 to 45, so 29 would be below. And the lower we get, we become more alkaline. Our HCO3 is 24. Our range is 22 to 26, so we are okay. So now the issue that we're looking at is going to be a respiratory issue. CO2 is the culprit, right? Because our bicarb is okay, CO2 is not. And the state that we're in is alkalosis. So now this becomes a respiratory alkalosis. Whoops, my K is going crazy. Okay, so we saw two scenarios. We saw a metabolic acidosis, we saw a metabolic alkalosis, and we just did a respiratory alkalosis. So now we've kind of seen a gamut of the easy ones. So now let's get a little bit fancy. So I'm just going to switch screens for a second. What I'll do is just erase this here because we've seen this and I think we're solid with that. And we're gonna get into some fancy schmancy ABGs. Now, what's different about what I'm gonna do now, the next scenario is that it has compensation in it. Um, now, when we're talking about compensation, compensation, I'm not talking about payment, right? Compensation is gonna mean that either, not either, I should say both, the bicarb and the CO2, they're going to be out of whack, okay? Either there's gonna be a rise or fall that we're gonna see in the bicarb and the CO2, meaning that they're going to both be out of range. That's compensation. The reason why they're both gonna be out of range is because they're trying to fix the pH. They're trying to get the pH back to its normal level. Now, it can either be partially compensated, a partial compensation, or it can be fully or complete, depending on you know what you're saying, fully compensated. Now, if it's a partial compensation, so if it's partially compensated, we still have the bicarbon and the CO2 out of whack, but it hasn't changed the pH back to normal. If it's fully compensated, 
we still have that bicarb and the CO2 out of whack and it has changed the pH back to normal. Okay, so that's the difference in what we're seeing. So let's put a little bubble around that so we know we're looking at compensation now. And so let's get some, some scenarios that are gonna be compensation scenarios. So let's switch up the color. Here's my pH, my CO2, and my bicarb, okay? So let's say our pH is 7.45. Let's say that our CO2 is 20 and bicarb is 13. So in this scenario, what are we looking at? Well, pH, first up, our pH is 7.45. Well, good, that's normal because our range is 7.35 to 7.45. Our CO2 is 20. That's well out of whack, right? That's very, very out of range. Our range is 35 to 45, so 20 is too low. So we know that that's low. And a low CO2 is going to indicate alkalinity. Our bicarb is 13, right? And that is also out of range. If our range is 22 to 26, we know 13 is too low. The lower we get in our bicarb, the more acidotic we become. Now we have an issue with both, right? Isn't our CO2 and our bicarb out of range? But our pH is normal. So by looking at this, we know we're looking at a compensation right now. We have to find out what is the culprit in this case. And to be able to figure out who is causing this change, we have to look at which range is the furthest out of their norm. So as an example, CO2 is 20. That's 15 away from its normal range. The bicarb is 13. That is what, nine away out of its range. So CO2 is further out of the range than the bicarb is. So this issue, is going to become a respiratory alkalosis and it is fully compensated. It's fully compensated because the pH is in the normal range while both the CO2 and the bicarb are out of range. It's respiratory because the CO2 is the furthest out of its normal value range. So this is the one that's causing the problem. That uh, bicarb that we see here is trying to compensate for that, okay? Now let's look at another one. I'm gonna erase this so we can get the roux on the screen. Let's do another one. Let's say that we had a pH, CO2, bicarb. I like to write those first so I don't forget them. Okay, so let's say pH is 7.42, CO2 is 18, and our bicarb is 11. So what are we looking at here? Let's do it together. So pH, 7.42, normal. Bicarb, or excuse me, carbon dioxide, which is our respiratory, too low. We know too low represents alkaline. Our bicarb, 11, too low. We know the lower bicarb gets, the more acidic it becomes, right? So we have both CO2 and bicarb out of their normal range, but our pH is normal. So we are compensated, right, fully. We're fully compensated because the pH is normal. Now we have to find out which one is pushing the hardest, essentially which one is out of the range by the most. So our CO2 is 18 and our bicarb is 11. So if you just do the simple math, you can see that the one that's furthest out of range is the CO2 and it is alkaline. So this is a respiratory alkalosis, fully compensated, okay? So now that we've done that, Let's look at the scenario that I posted on Instagram today and see how many of you were right on that. So I'll just erase this, come back and let's set up our scenario. So the one that I posted on Instagram today, pH, CO2, and bicarb. And we had a pH of 
7.28, we had a CO2 of 17, and we had a bicarb of 8. Now, what are we looking at here? First up, our CO2. Um, actually, sorry, first up, our pH. Let's look, let's look at this first. Our pH, 7.28, right? We are low. We are low out of our range. We should be at 7.35, 7.45, so we're below. Below means acid, right? CO2, 17, again, below. Below in CO2, it's gonna represent alkalinity. Our bicarb, also low, eight. Lower we get on our bicarb, acid. So what do we notice? We notice our bicarb, our CO2, and our pH. They're all out of whack. So is this a compensation? Yes, it's still a compensation. But is it fully compensated? No, it was a partial compensation because this the pH is not returned to normal yet. If this had returned to normal while these two were still out of range, it would be fully compensated, but it hasn't. This is a partial compensation. So who's causing a problem? Well, in this case, we can't say that uh, we're gonna use the trick of who's farthest out of the range, right? We can do that when it is fully compensated, but not in a partial compensation. So in order to figure out who is the culprit in this case, when these are both out of range, is to figure out who is driving this acidic factor. And in this case, it's the bicarb, right? Because the bicarb is causing the acidity in the pH. So then we end up with a metabolic acidosis, okay? And so that is actually the answer to the question that I posted. This is the same scenario that I posted earlier. So this is a metabolic acidosis and it is partially compensated. Now that furthest out of the range trick you can use when it's fully compensated because the pH is gonna be completely normal. You're just gonna be looking for the value that's the most out of whack. But when they're compensated partially, you're gonna be able to look at the pH, see if the pH represents acid or if it represents uh, alkaline, and which one of these components, CO2 or bicarb, is the one that's driving that factor, okay? So you, you did very well. I still have some answers coming in on Instagram and you're really getting it. Um, but you know, when you feel like you're struggling a little bit with ABGs, you can just check this video out, watch it as much as you need to, and you'll get it. So if you have any questions or requests or anything, you know how to reach me on Instagram at tootrn, E-O-O-T-R-N, or on my website, um, which is tootrn.com. So www.tootrn.com. And you can always email me directly or uh, message me if you have any questions or requests. So um, happy studying.